The first guest is Ian Hadmore. He played Payat Pri. Uh, we have Finn Jones, who played Lawrence. And of course, Julian Glover as um, Maester Pycelle. Grand Maester. Grand Maester, sorry, sorry. So, Uh, well, um, everybody's, you know, been looking forward to this immensely, as, as have we. Um, uh, Ian, uh, you're known for key supporting roles in, you know, in various sci-fi and fantasy and, and uh, supernatural uh, series, uh, like um, Life on Mars, uh, The Fates, uh, with Actors playing uh, Gendry and Marjorie from Game of Thrones as well. Joe Dempsey and uh, Natalie Dormer. And um, Finn, your, uh, you, you, your experience was in uh, Hollyoaks. Yeah. And uh, a fun fact, his real name is uh, Terence, but he had to change it uh, so as not to be confused with Terry Jones from Monty Python. And uh, he's also uh, a DJ. Um, and the the fact that the, the you know the amount of fun facts about Julian Glover are uh, r ridiculous in number. Um, he's he's been yeah, yeah, fun facts or impressive facts, impressive facts. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's actually the first question I'd like to ask you. You've been part of one of four of the great franchises. You've played in Star Wars, you've played in Indiana Jones, you've played in, in James Bond, uh, and and now you're gonna now you're playing in, in one of the most successful series from now. Uh, and I'm the voice of the spider in yeah. in uh, yes. <laughs> And that's the list. It's amazing. It's a, it's a very amazing list for us. We're all in awe of being the same as you are. How is it? What does that do to a person to, to play in all these amazing franchises? Well, it's a strange question. What does it do to a person? It doesn't actually do anything to me except make me better known, which is um, very valuable. Which means that there are people who come to conventions like this and they want my autograph and they pay for it. That's the difference between us. Um, that having been said, I think we would all uh, uh, say that uh, we don't get no royalties from the films at all. Um, we don't get any more than our original salary on the film. So I um, don't think we're walking around in gold cars, because we're not, uh, or even driving around in them. Um, it's brilliant having done all those movies. I mean, I've been terribly lucky. It's completely my chance. It's not my design, but I have. I think I'm the only actor who's been in, in all of them, and um, uh, that is a sort of non-achievement of which I'm very proud. Um, I, I'm now an old man, as you can see, and I'm now playing old part, old people, and I love doing that, and particularly on Game of Thrones, I'm a Cupid gentleman for very long. Um, um, <laughs> Uh, my, I, when I first went in to do it, um, I was quite bored with the part. All you did was sit around the table and offer a bit of advice which was never taken. And uh, so I went to the writers and said, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I don't want to go on doing this. Um, do something for me. And they said, yes, 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 we will. And so they made, I don't know how many people have seen Game of Thrones, but they made me into somebody else as well. Um, somebody who was hiding his life. And that's the reason he survived. And that's all explained in episode series three, um, which uh, you, I can't tell you about. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I'm not dead yet. 
not, not, none of us are dead yet, are we? You're dead. <laughs> you? No. Hello. I'm dead. <laughs> I was wondering, um, I guess you get a lot of people just uh, coming up to you in the streets and just imitating characters you've done. Which one was the, is the most imitated? I've never had anybody imitate <laughs> in my life, except for the producers of their own homes. And I have no knowledge of that show. I don't play imitable parts. Imitable parts. Um, I think I was about to do <laughs> Well, um, all three characters you play are um, visually very striking. Um, were you, uh, this is a question for all three, were you able to influence the character design in a way? I know you were. Um, Yes, in that way I was able to, but normally they're pretty strict, aren't they? They're, they're very loyal to the book indeed. That's what, one of the things which is really good about it. They don't deviate from the book, but they did with me, because I'm so old. <laughs> yes, and the costume design for uh, I3 was really involved, and uh, astonishingly, some of the, the costs involved in the undergarments that I was wearing that you never saw, uh, you know, would pay for my entire wardrobe for my entire life. So, uh, maybe I shop in the charity shops, but it's, uh, yeah, it's been, it's been marvellous. The only way in which I influenced the costume was I'm very skinny. <laughs> did I ever know that really, uh, just, uh, there was like some wonderful armoury that suited me up and, um, yeah, it's just great work, I really created and talented, uh, people on the set and, and I mean they, they are really incredible. You just go on set, you wear these clothes and you, you see like you know, just everything about it just like, that's what real art studio art is like it's it's monumental, it's amazing. So I just think it's that uh, I stand in the breeze. Yeah I've I've um, been on a lot of movies in my life. Um, some of uh, they shoot very quickly. They don't shoot this one quickly at all. They spend infinite numbers of takes on everything. And sometimes it's really annoying, um, because often it's nothing to do with you. Uh, it's to do with the camera or the lighting or, or somebody else has screwed it up. Um, uh, that can be very annoying, but the, the word is painstaking. They are absolutely painstaking. Until they get it down, right down the center, they will not pass the take. And that's very invigorating as well as being annoying too, because you know that you're going to be shown off as your best. And when you see the thing, you see you are being shown off as your best. And they always choose the right take for you uh, when you've, you've done maybe 12 or something. They always choose number nine, and you knew, you knew that was the right one for you, and then they always do. And um, it's a fantastic program to work on. I just wish they paid us a bit more money. <laughs> So you have to do all these takes over and over. The question I would ask is, how comfortable is the Maester's chain you're wearing? It's desperately uncomfortable. <laughs> that that great thing I have around my neck hangs, uh, uh, has to be on a sort of harness inside my costume. It's ridiculous. It, it, it's so heavy. It's so heavy. And all the great cloaks and everything are literally sewn in. Every morning I have to be sewn into my costume to get the, the things right. And this harness, oh, when it's hot weather, it's absolutely awful. I think all our costumes are pretty bad in, in the hot weather, aren't they? Uh, I, I don't think I'm holding their attention at the moment. <laughs> our, our costumes are really hot in the hot weather, aren't they? Yeah. Absolutely. You're not, oh, absolutely awful. Speaking of hot weather, I think, uh, Ian, um, you played, uh, uh, um, your scenes were shot mostly in, was uh, that, uh, the Bronx, or, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, quite, quite something we, we filmed in, uh, an island of 
<laughs> we come uh, just off to Dubrovnik and uh, the scenes with the, uh, the slaughter of the, uh, the other worldies of Kar was uh, in a disused, an old monastery on the island of Lokrum, just off Dubrovnik, but it was just stunning. Yeah, yeah, quite something. But the, the set, as you can see, the design of the set just enhanced that courtyard. I couldn't, couldn't quite believe it when I saw the, the place with the, uh, with the dressing room, but it, even so, it was quite, quite amazing to be part of it and be in there. You know, you, it was a gift for an actor, really, to be in, a, in, a, in, in such a, a well-designed space. So. Mm. Was there a question? Or were you just <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 uh, in the series, uh, how, how does that work? Uh, in season one, you, you have to do a, a, a tourney and, uh, for the hand. And um, I think we see you again fighting with Brienne. Yeah. How did these scenes work out for you? It, it, it's not. It, it's always not. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's just for me. It's, uh, they've got a wonderful stunt scene, which they've only stunts beforehand. And uh, yeah, they just sit my arm on and, and look fabulous. And, and then uh, again, I just step in and do my thing. So. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it. Talking of stunts, let me tell you a little story about Charles and Heston. Charles and Heston had a stuntman called Joe Canut, and he did all, all like, uh, he, he was brilliant, brilliant. And he got married at one point, and he just struck a chuck along to come. Chuck Hessen along to the wedding, and in uh, the joking up speech of thanks to everybody coming, he said, and I'd like you to welcome Mr. Charlton Hessen, who does my dialogue. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, as some of the brave people in the audience might know, reading the books on which the series is based uh, is a daunting but rewarding task. I think a lot of people uh, here actually know what your fates are. You know, what happens to you, uh, regardless of whether we were able to see the season three uh, yet for a year or not. Um, but do you have a clue? Do we want to know what happens to us? No, I don't want to know what happens to me. I just ask at the end of each series, do I survive? <laughs> <laughs> and then they said to me, this, at the end of three, we think you do, but if you do get killed, it'll be a very good death. <laughs> <laughs> and I am completely toast at this. I am a sprite in episode 10. I knew I was out of the series completely when they set fire to my arm. I was getting to the stuntman, so yes. No coming back. On to you. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm excited for his future. I, I, I hope that he, I, I don't want to spoil it. I'm just not. But, yeah. I have to say, I, I, I've played a lot of historical characters as well as um, fictional ones, and I make a point of not finding out too much about what's happened. Um, because I've got a script in front of me, and I, I always know what the person looked like or whatever, because it was a famous person. Um, uh, but I, I've got a script, and if you start going outside that script, if you start reading the, the history of that person, you say, why isn't that scene in? Why isn't that scene in? We don't need that scene. Well, that scene's completely wrong. Uh, and you, you get into trouble with the, with the producers and the directors, and so I don't do it until afterwards. I shall read the whole Game of Thrones, and seriously, when I'm dead. And then, not be sure it's dead, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> or maybe then. <laughs> Uh, you all had a chance to meet the writer, George Martin. Yeah, I, I did. Yeah. Can, can everyone hear me? Do I have to have this microphone? No. no. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, Actually, you do. Oh, you do? Oh, okay. Working for a camera. Hey, baby. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I met George in the first, first, uh, first season. He was really nice. <laughs> he had a great laugh. He's, he's, yeah, he's, he's a cool guy. 
he must be a bit nuts as well though, to kind of create such a world in his head. <laughs> yeah, oh, I, I, I'm not. Well, I, I don't. I don't want to say anything. Spoiler. But yeah, I know. I know what happens. I don't want anybody coming up telling me what happens to me <laughs> this afternoon. I don't want to know. Just come and buy my autograph. <laughs> Well, uh, David Benioff and Dan Weiss are essential to the whole, whole show, of course, and um, I expect they're involved in every part of it. Um, how was it working with them, and how did they pitch your character to you? And, you know, was it always the character you auditioned for? In my case, I did not play the part. I do not play the part I auditioned for. I'm, I'm playing a part of someone who was going to play it and got ill. Um, who's now back, Roy de Tries. Um who's now back playing another part. Um, I auditioned for two other parts and didn't get them, but I got this one. I don't give a damn who got it, because I got it. <laughs> I auditioned for Craster initially, which is strange because he's about the beast and I'm a bit slight, not quite as, but it was a good audition, it went very well, <clears throat> quite sinister so feel to it, so I think that's why they posted me for Pipe Tree and had me back two weeks later. So pleased. Yeah. <laughs> really like that, but yes. And at least in David Benioff uh, and Dan Weiss, it was just wonderful working with them. The dialogue that they produce is just so easy to speak. It's just a gift. So yeah, definitely very cool. And also uh, met the lady who commissioned The Wire, which was nice. Uh, yeah, the, 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 one of the execs from HBO. Uh, I believe. Uh, uh, it's, it's just wonderful to meet them all. Great atmosphere actually on the show. Wonderful atmosphere on set. Yeah, I, I can come for both those. Um, I originally uh, auditioned for Jon Snow, and then uh, I didn't get it, and then I think they were thinking about me from Rob Stark, and then the pilot was made, and then I came back by Loris. So, it's Loris. And working with Dan and David is great, they're always on set, they're, they're, like, so the writing is amazing, they're so involved. Uh, no, no, it wasn't. But yeah, they're just, they're just so involved and, and they really, they really guide it, they really care about it, they really care about it. And um, it's, like you said, it's just a fantastic environment to be a part of. Everyone on that show loves it, you know, and then even, you know, after hours we sit around in the bar and like, discussing the characters, as I'm sure you guys do at home. So it's, yeah, it's a, it's a total joy to Mm. Some of the, di the directions amazing as well. David Nutter and Alan Taylor, in particular, I was involved with. It's just, just a wonderful experience and to watch them go and work. It's, uh, David Nutter, in particular, the day that we did the uh, the scene where we slaughtered the uh, the merchants, the other merchants of the car. It was the it was such a big scene to control, and in the midst of all that, the, the logistics of trying to get that done. All the green screen stuff, the extra duplicates of me, they weren't real. Yeah. So, yeah. In the midst of that, at one point, I looked at a, a boom operator, you know, the holding a mic, and, and, and said, Do you need a drink of water? Yes, please. Just incredible. And all, all the while, directing us to perfect. <laughs> so, um, I know you can't discuss much of what happens in uh, Season 3, but you can sort of give hints or something. Um, <laughs> and, um, well, uh, last season Paisal had a brush with you know, imprisonment uh, due to Tyrion, but now Tyrion has um, been deposed as Hand of the King, and his, uh, you know, the original Hand of the King was Tywin Lannister, of course. So, how was it working with Charles Dance? It works very well with Charles Dance. He's, I've known Charles since we were both in our mid-twenties, and we've sort of come up, well, he's younger than me. I suppose I'm 35 and he was 25 years. And um, uh, we get on terribly well. And I think he is, this is probably the best thing he has ever done in his life. It is, he is smack on on this part. I cannot think of any other actor who speaks English who is writer for that part. It is fantastic, fantastic. Because he doesn't fool around with it. 
He just played it absolutely down there, like that. And there are some, there's a very, very good scene in, in series three, which I'm not going to tell you what it is, when you see his heart, and you really do see his heart. It, it seems very, very moving. Uh, it's in a scene with his son, uh, who is, I can't think of anybody else in the world who could play uh, him either. Peter Dinklage is just a simply superb actor. I think he could play anything. I, I think he could play a giant. <laughs> anyway, I get on very well and I'm with, with, uh, with Charlie and uh, I hope I always will. Um, well, uh, Finn, uh, uh, I was wondering, uh, something, when watching the show, one of the things that struck me as funny was um, the different pronunciations of Tyrell and Tyrell and Tyrell and Tyrell and what's your personal pronunciation and what's your motivation for that? <laughs> um, I prefer Tyrell just because I think it sounds cooler. I, I, I always, when I was reading the books, I always pronounced my head as Tyrell. Um, I remember when they, they first sent around a pronunciation list, and on the list it said, it said uh, Tyrell. So I think, I think in the first season, maybe the second I was saying Tyrell, but then other people were saying Tyrell, so I was like, okay, well, I'm going to say Tyrell. So it's just something, it's a bit dressed to T-Y-R-E-L-L. It's Tyrell. Right. Right. Well, there we go. But then people say it differently. Maybe yeah. Shakespeare. Yeah. I like Tyrell. It's fantasy. How do you guys prefer it when you say Tyrell? 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 My <laughs> okay, um, I think it's time uh, for the audience, if they have any questions, uh, you can come up and maybe grab the microphone or you can just ask from your seat and just shout really loud so we can understand. Uh, so, who's the first? Can I shout from here? Question for Julian. Um, you were in Doctor Who twice in the old days, uh, in, in the 60s and late 70s. What, what differences do you observe between the way Doctor Who was made then and the way Game of Thrones is made now? What differences do you observe between the way Doctor Who was made then and the way Game of Thrones is made now? Chalk and cheese, the say. Um, the early Doctor Who's were done on the fourth and Hagenian episode. And uh, cardboard walls and um, everything was, was mock-up and um, it's surprising they got it as good as they did um, enough for it to be have gone on for 25 years incidentally my son has just been in a, a, a proper play that it made about the beginning of Doctor Who yeah and um, in which he plays the young man in it, Doctor Who's psychic and um, it's, it's now a serious uh, phenomenon Doctor Who. Um, but in the thing called the old days when I was involved, well, the first one was very, I was a William Hartnell one. Uh, that was very much um, stuck together with uh, safety pins. Uh, the second one, City of Death, was much, much, much better than that. Uh, it was filmed properly. Now, it's sort of like Game of Thrones. And, uh, I exaggerate, of course, but it's so complicated. They spend a lot of money on it, except on the actors. Um, I'm sorry I keep on about this. You all think we're so rich. It's, it's absolutely true. Um, but it, and it's now much slicker and m much cleverer and um, more inventive. Uh, I don't personally watch it, but that's not because I don't think it's good. I haven't got time. Especially once he's learned how to walk properly and... <laughs> 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 I don't know, you know, like he can get inside like, people's minds, he can... 
I think he's going to be very intuitive and very. Uh, 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 he would be a great leader when he grows up. And the fact that he's a cripple is just kind of perfect. He can just sit on the throne and it's. <laughs> so, yeah, so, brand, brand for the brand for the throne. I'll maintain complete impartiality on this. <laughs> me, I mean me. <laughs> Dead Well, we have that question. Yeah, I think we do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the international press, uh, obviously I, I guess a lot of these people are gamers. There's been a lot of merchandising involving Game of Thrones, and there's been several games, role-playing games, several iterations, board games, etc. Have you guys had any experience with any of those? Uh, for example, role-playing game, the most recent one is released by Green Dolin, Green Phantom Line, so Um, I think there's been some actors that have done the voiceovers for some of the games, but really it's a completely different entity from, from HBO to show as far as the actors are concerned. Uh, we, 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 I, I, I see them pop up on the internet, and, you know, in shops, but I, I have no idea they're actually they're going on. Are they any good, the games? Uh, yeah. The role-playing game is, yeah. Yeah? What's the role-playing game? Is that uh, like Song a... of Fire and Die is released by Green Rolling. Uh, okay. I, I, was, I was only about the card game the other day. That sounded really good. But it's about, yeah, so I'd love to, I'd love, actually, I'd love to get involved and see what they're like. I've been too influenced by too many people, and it's no good being influenced by too many people in games as well. It must only be influenced by one person. And um, I, I'd be so confused. I, I, oh no, I, no, I don't want to do it. Yeah. <laughs> very good question. Yes, yes, very good question. I think without magic powers, if you made a low status indeed, I'd probably be a scavenger or something, you know, cleaning out. Yes, scavenger. Anybody knows what a scavenger did or does, then that's. But I think Pyre would be without his magic curse. Oh, you've lost forever. <laughs> no, I, 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 this Game of Thrones nonsense. I'm like, ah, I'm sure you're going to High Garden and just chill out and you know, <laughs> play around in, 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 in the grass. I, I, I have no intention to, 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 to try and claim some throne. It's so boring and it's kind of off the end of power. Just love and just get on with people, you know? So I'd like, probably die first. <laughs> uh, one more question, please. Um, yeah. um, you. Um, if you could play any other character in the series, any other character, characters or metal, which one would you be and why? I would be Charles Dance. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too old, but that's the part I would ideally like to play in the series. And that's the part that I would have been right for 20 years ago. Absolutely <laughs> right for, for me. That's a really tough nut and uh, someone who knows his mind and uh, doesn't bear any arguments for anybody at all. And that would have been perfect for me. Seriously. <laughs> I don't really have any idea about this. I'm quite like the sound of what Kranz took up to. <laughs> but, you know, you know. Maybe not. Did I, did I think that I was saying that? I'd quite like to be the raven, the three-eyed raven. Or, 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 you know, so you, you're just kind of like there. Or that tree, that, you know, the, 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 uh, the, one of those trees. One of those trees. 
Yeah. 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 Much more talkative. <laughs> no, I'm perfect just as I am. <laughs> oh God, no! Norris is pretty perfect, no? Yeah. Do you not think? I think maybe he'd be more. Oh God, I don't know. We're all very well cast. Yeah. <laughs> I'm too young. <laughs> <laughs> maybe just like. No, I don't know. I think he's perfect. Neighbor is lovely working with Amelia. She's great, she's such a sweet soul, and she's uh, very dedicated and uh, fun. So that was a lovely thing. The, the dead scene itself was kind of interesting because obviously we had didn't have real life baby dragon cod. That said, we had two guys with slow torches. Uh, <laughs> no, we didn't. But we, we, we could have done that, would have been quite good. We had um, basically bendy toys. Or dragons, and occasionally a silver ball on a stick. <laughs> uh, but no, it was it was it was an interesting scene to play because of the uh, the chamber that we filmed it in. It's just as you see that it actually exists uh, in that form. So it's quite an, quite an interesting environment, especially when they start blowing flames in there. It, it suits up pretty quickly. So <laughs> respiratory uh, problems were. Uh, Quite common, but it, no, it was a good scene to do. I think it was, it was, it was, it was wonderfully done and handled by Alan Taylor, the director, again. So yes, uh, hmm. it was fine. Didn't get too hot. I choked up. So. <laughs> I also like, uh, I like, yeah, cool parts. Parts are cool. So parts are really cool. Do you know what I mean? Cool plants. Okay, with uh, the last sentence, plants are cool, we're going to end this. Plants are cool. Uh, we're going to make room for the next uh, lecture. I want to thank you from the bottom of all our hearts to be here. It's amazing to be in the same room as you guys. Uh, we hope your salary will get much better, better, <laughs> and that you will have amazing parts uh, to play still. And um, that's all. Thank you very much.